In chapter 7 of Osir, when the sky tore, the royal family of Osir kingdom was said to be descendants of the last Roman king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. A Roman king? Really? Wasn't Rome a republic? Yes and yes. Before Rome was this glorious empire, it was actually a state ruled by kings, seven kings in total, for about 200 years. The first one was Romulus. Yep, that Romulus. He and his twin brother Remus were supposed to have been raised by a wolf, but that is a story for another day. Romulus founded the city Rome in 753 BCE and crowned himself king. Then there were Numa Populus, Tullus Hostilius, Ancus Marcius, Tarquinius Priscus, Servius Tullius, and the seventh and the last king of Rome, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. Quite an unusual name, don't you think? So how did it come about? Interesting enough, in those days, kingship was not hereditary, so the throne did not get passed down to the sons. Instead, the next king was decided by the senators, but Superbus would not have it that way. This Tarquin came to power by murdering his father-in-law Tullius. Remember him? The sixth king. So, in 535 BCE, Tarquin took the crown and ruled in absolute despotism. And that was how he came to be known as Superbus, meaning the proud. Superbus wasn't exactly a proud man by today's definition of the word. On the contrary, he was cruel, cunning, and ruthless. True, during his reign, he cemented Rome as an important power in the region and completed the temple of Jupiter Capitolinus. But his tyrannical reign also caused a lot of discontent among the people. And the final straw came when his son, Sextus Tarquinius, raped a noble woman named Lucretia. The floodgate opened and there was no turning back. What happened next was quite remarkable. Lucius Junius Brutus. No, not that Brutus who killed Julius Caesar. This Brutus. Long story short, Brutus led the senators to revolt and they won. The Tarquin family was expelled from Rome and the monarchy was no more. After the exile, records show that Superbus tried to incite neighboring cities to attack Rome in order to reclaim his throne. Obviously, it didn't help. Other than that, his fate was not that well documented. Some claimed he went to central Italy in the region of Etruria, where the family originally came from. The truth is, there are few, if any, historical records for this period of Rome. In fact, even the existence of the first four kings was not universally accepted. On top of that, the Gauls were said to have destroyed many records when they invaded the city. So, what we know today about the Tarquin family are stories written by historians like Cicero and Levy hundreds of years later. But these stories are really just stories. And as Richard Beaufort from Osea Kingdom said, history is merely a set of stories told by whosoever decides to tell a tale. Who is the judge your story is truer than mine? So, the truth is, no one really knows what happened to the Tarquin family after the exile. Which brings me to my final thought. Could someone really have wandered into this obscure realm where the kingdom of Ozia lies? Few realize a secret that lurks within, and fewer speak about it openly. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.